Okay, it's working. How exciting. So I'm actually about to go live on both. Ah, I am now live on both my Facebook group and on Instagram. This is the first time I've been able to do this. My old laptop like would not let me go live on um on my laptop. Like I couldn't go live on any platform. So I've always only been able to do one. And now I can do both. This is this is exciting. I'm very excited about this. Because now everyone on Instagram can watch and everyone can watch it on the replay because it can stay forever on my Facebook group. Beautiful. Today is a great day. So today I want to um, basically this whole 14 days, like me going live for the 14 days is me talking about all of the things that I have been very present for me lately. The things that I've been contemplating, the things that I've been thinking about, the things that um have been really heavy and present for me. Ooh, we have someone joining us on the Facebook group. Hi, how are you? So we're talking today about manifestation versus conjuring and how there's this huge difference between, um, between them. There's this very different energy if you're trying to manifest something from a state of worthiness and fun and joy and pure happiness as opposed to trying to manifest from a state of I need to make this happen to prove something. So it's a trying to fill an energy center that you don't have on your human design chart, trying to do this in a consistent way or doing it because you think that you need to do this to be good enough, like whatever it is. You, there's there's a disconnect. It's not a soul desire if you're trying to conjure something instead of just manifesting it effortlessly and easily. And a lot of the manifestation practices that I see being taught on the internet right now are in fact conjuring. They're not, um, and I'm sure that the, the intention of the teachers behind them was manifestation that works for them, but there's so many people who are, you know, in Facebook groups and on Instagram, just like asking questions like, okay, how can I manifest, you know, $3,000 in two days? How can I, and they're doing it from this state of fear. They feel like they need to call this thing in quickly and effortlessly and very fast because there's consequences if they don't. And because there's those consequences, that's an issue. Does that make sense? It's this like, because you're wanting this thing for another reason, that in and of itself is not healthy. That's not allowing you to manifest it. You are conjuring it. You think that you need this thing because of, because, and that's an expectation. If you have a reason for the thing, like you want this because this is going to give you this. We talked about that yesterday and that is the act of, um, that's putting expectations on your desire, on your manifestation. So manifestation, when it's in alignment with you and it's a soul manifestation, it's something that you truly, truly want. It's very real for you. It is a soul desire and you've worked through it. You, fi you figured out that it's a soul desire. When you ask for it in the way that according to your human design chart, according to your manifestation um, profile, according to your energy, if you ask for it in a way that you're asking for this thing because you feel it, you're like, hey, universe, this is going to make me feel supported in doing my divine work. Me having this is of service because it's going to raise my vibration even more, which is going to allow me to raise the vibration of the planet even more. So me having this thing makes me feel good. It amplifies how I already feel. I already feel amazing. I already feel great. And this is just going to help me to feel that even more. That's in alignment. That's a fun place to be. And when you're asking if you're a specific manifester, if you're non-specific manifester, um, active versus passive, however, like your specific type is according to your chart, when you're doing it in a way where if you, if you're making those lists, like you need to be making lists, or if you're just being super supportive and, um, you've got the peripheral, um, identity of each of those chart, like you, the peripheral identity and the peripheral picture of what you need to be filled by the universe when you're in alignment and you're doing it in a way that is in alignment with your soul it's easy and it's effortless and it gets to come in and it gets to support you that's manifestation you're like i get i want to feel um me having this thing having this experience is going to be fun and expansive and easy and effortless but i don't need this experience to feel fun and easy and effortless and joyful because I myself know that I create joy. This is just going to help me amplify the joy that I am feeling. And because it's just amplifying the joy that I already feel, because I know that I control all my feelings myself in that energy, you can then say, okay, this gets to support me, but it doesn't get to create me. 
this gets to support me, but it does not define me. If it doesn't happen, it's still not a big deal. There's this art of detachment that happens with manifestation, and that's not true if you're talking about conjuring. When you're conjuring something, you are putting stress on it. You're putting strain on it. You have a lot of expectations on this desire, and you are saying, okay, I need this thing to come into my life. I need this thing. I need this thing. I need this thing. You've got a lot of pressure on it. And when you're putting pressure on it, when you're putting pressure and expectations on this thing, it's not able to show up for you in the way that you want it to. It can't show up for you in the way that you want it to. It just doesn't happen. It's just not going to work for you. Because you want to manifest this big thing, this one big thing, because after you manifest this thing, if you can just believe in yourself enough to manifest this one thing that you really, really want, then you'll be able to prove yourself that you can manifest, then you'll feel good enough, then you'll feel worthy enough, then you will feel like you know what you're talking about. After I manifest this thing, I will feel this thing that I currently do not feel. That is an automatic red flag that you are trying to conjure something and you're not trying to manifest. So when you're conjuring something, it's because you feel you're in a state of lack. You're not in a state of abundance. You are saying, I am in a state energetically. I am in a state of lack. I do not believe that I can have this. I do not believe that I'm worthy of this. And so I want to try and get it because if I could do that, oh, I would obviously be worthy enough, but I don't think that I'm worthy enough to actually make that happen. There's that disconnect. There's, um, I mean, really, if you talk about manifestation with anybody ever, you understand that you have a vibrational frequency, you, the universe or like your state, it's an internal external thing. Your internal vibrational state is at a certain frequency. Your external vibrational state is going to match that. So if you're saying, I want to manifest this thing, which is way up here, because if I could feel that this is obviously attached to an inner feeling of here, you can't, you can't change the reflection until you change your inner state. If it's a mirror, okay, you have that mirror in the middle. So if you think about like you're sitting down to put on your makeup and you're like, ooh, I wanna be wearing lipstick because wearing that lipstick, seeing that lipstick would make me feel like this. Seeing the lipstick in the mirror would make me feel like this. Seeing me wearing lipstick in my reflection would make me feel like this. Cool, how are you gonna do that? Are you gonna start drawing on the mirror? No, you're going to put the lipstick on yourself. You're going to feel like that. You're going to do the internal work. You're changing your inner state, not what's in the mirror. You can't change what's in the mirror unless you change the inner state. It's just a reflection. So you cannot change your external reality until you change your internal state. So if you're saying that I need to manifest $3,000 in a week or whatever it is, if you need to manifest a car, you need to manifest a relationship, this thing that you are trying really hard, trying equals pressure equals stress equals negative, not negative energy, but not in flow basically is what that means. So I am apologizing if I'm like looking all over the place. It's weird because they're, this one's mirrored. <laughs> So it like looks funny to me. This one's what I'm used to seeing. I don't know. I'm getting used to it. It's fine. So when you are trying to change your state, you think that this thing outside of you is going to equate whatever it is that you want. Um, it's going to make you feel better. You need to realize that you actually are the person who you have the ability to make yourself feel like that. And the only way if you're saying, I cannot feel joy until this manifests into my existence, you are never going to be able to manifest that. It will never come into your existence. And that is a state of conjuring. You are trying to pull something that is not effortless and easy into your experience. If you think about the energy, think about how it feels in your body when you're trying to conjure something, when you're trying to call something in that, um, and you're trying to call something in that's like darker, that's not in a state of like happy excitement and joy, you feel angry, you feel sad, you feel bitter, you don't feel good about yourself, and you feel like you're trying to pull this thing into your ex experience. That's an art of conjuring. That isn't manifestation, that's conjuring. That's what we're talking about. So if you're trying to conjure something and you don't feel good about yourself, you're like, I need this thing to feel joy. I need this thing to feel happy. I need this thing to prove. I need this thing to come into my existence so that I can prove that I'm good enough, so that I can prove that I'm worthy enough. I just need to prove myself. And if once I can manifest this one big thing, then everything will be fine. 
it'll be worth it. It'll be, I'll be able to manifest it. You know what I mean? Once you just prove it once, then you'll be able to do it for the rest of your life. You think that somehow that's going to work for you. And it's funny because you've tried to do that in the past and it still has never worked for you. So repeating it is the, repeating the same thing and expecting a different result is, um, um, it's, n it looks like it is from India. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't think it's from India, but it was a gift. So I'm not exactly sure where it came from. That's a good question. <laughs> so if you're trying to pull something into your experience, you're trying to conjure it, you're trying to create it, but you're not in a state of alignment energetically. That's that internal state is not matching the external reality. And so you are trying to pull something into your experience. There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of um, like, yeah, there's pressure on the situation where you're saying, I need this to happen. I need this to happen. I need this to happen. It's constricting. It's painful. It hurts. It's not fun. It does not feel good at all. So when you're trying to pull something and conjure something into your experience, you feel like shit. <laughs> it just doesn't feel good because that's dark magic. That is not manifestation and alignment. That's not playing with energy in a fun way. That is pulling and it's a state of shame. You're trying to, basically what you're doing is you're at a low vibration and you're trying to pull this thing that's at a higher vibration down to your low vibration in hopes that maybe if I pull this thing down to my vibration, it's gonna bring me back up to where I think it's gonna be. Um, this is a great talk. I haven't heard this before. Manifest yeah, manifestation feels easy. So manifestation is when you're in alignment. It's like, oh, I'm just going to raise my vibrational frequencies and play with energy. It's a fun thing. It's realizing that this thing outside of you does not have the power to make you feel how you want to feel. You have the power to make you feel how you want to feel. And when you feel the way that you want to feel, you raise your vibrational frequency to match that of your external reality that you're desiring. And it just gets to amplify that. It's fun and expansive and easy and effortless. And it has a lot to do with if you're sitting in your self-worth. If where you are sitting in your self-worth is in alignment with whatever it is that you want to manifest, yeah, you have to have the feeling first. And what it is, is we think that these things around us are going to make us feel a certain way, but really the, the things outside of us can't make us feel a certain way. We, um, we are the creators of emotion. So if you put your hands over your heart and you close your eyes and you think of the emotion that you want to feel, like joy, 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 you feel that emotion in your body, you raise your frequency. Things outside of us don't have the ability to raise our frequency, to raise our energy, to change how we feel at all. It's just how we've labeled them and decided to react to them. So if, for example, um, we react differently to a dollar bill than we do to a hundred dollar bill, it's, yeah, that's what we, ah, that's what we are manifesting shows of the land. Yeah, thank you. So. It's easy and effortless and fun when you're manifesting something and it's just coming into your experience and it's fun and it's expansive and you need to be in a state of worthiness. You need to realize that because I'm living in according to my design, my human design, um, if I'm manifesting in a way that, is that your baby? Um, it's my cat. My cat is whining in the background if that's what you're hearing. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I don't have kids, but yeah, my cat's whining in the background. I'm sorry if you can hear that. <laughs> so anyways, if, oh, I lost my train of thought. Darn it. Okay. We'll get it back. Okay. So <laughs> if, um, when you're trying to manifest something, you want something because you think it's going to make you feel a certain way. And we react, to, we, act, we, react, we react to different things different ways. Okay, so you react very differently from to a $1 bill, like finding a $1 bill on the ground than you would a $100 bill. They're both made of the same material. We've just decided that the $100 bill is worth more. It's more valuable. So we're going to have a greater reaction to it when really it's sitting next to a $1 bill. There's very little difference between the physical objects. But we've decided that mentally or emotionally or energetically or... Um, Financially, this means a lot more to be to have those extra zeros than to not have the zeros on this piece of paper. So we have a lot of attachment to the things around us, which means that we have expectations. And if you, the recording is still in my Facebook group, but I did an entire live video yesterday about expectations versus standards. That's a great one to go back and watch. So 
you put these standards and these expectations on this thing. You have, it's not just money that you're calling in, which if you're manifesting it, you're like, oh, I just want more money. More money makes me feel free. It makes me feel happy. It makes me feel, um, how do I raise my book? We can talk about that. Yes. <laughs> so when you're raising your vibrations, um, yeah, so you can add yourself to the Facebook group. It's linked in my bio if you want to watch. I'm also recording this on my computer right now, and this is also going to be in the Facebook group as well. So, yeah, all of the recordings are in the group. Absolutely, I'll add you. So to raise your vibration, um, first of all, you need to be manifesting in a way that's in alignment with yourself. So manifesting in a way that's in alignment with yourself by your human design, living by your human design, living in alignment with your true self, with your soul, with um, who you're meant to be, with your like living in your purpose really allowing yourself to just be who you are instead of trying to be anything that you are not really uh, um, acknowledging and giving yourself the license to just be you very fully and very um very fully and very truly when you're in alignment with your authenticity and when you're in alignment with your soul purpose and you're like oh this is who i am this is what i'm here to do for the world and when you realize just how big of an impact you're here to have, you realize that actually it's okay for me to ask for bigger things because they just support me. I know who I am and I know what I'm worth. I know that the work that I'm here to do is not just, you know, I don't just want to have fun here. I'm a soul. I am part of source. I am a part of God, whatever the terms work for you. So really you can raise your vibration all you want, but the root of it is your self-worth. Do you feel like you were good enough to, do you have enough faith behind your power? Do you have enough faith to say, just because I wrote it down on a list, I believe that it's going to come to me, that there's no other actions that I need to take because I am just that powerful? Is that, are you at that level of self-worth? Are you able to believe in yourself that much? You should be. That's where you should be. That is, I mean, ultimately you should, if we believed in ourselves enough, we'd be able to snap our fingers and see physical objects appear in front of us. I believe that true magic really exists. It just has to, has to do with the fact that we do not believe that we are that powerful, which we don't believe we are that powerful because we're using all of our power to create limitations. So we have all of our energy and all of our power is tied up in tr trying to um, make sense of our reality. It's trying to give meaning to the things behind the things so it's that 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 is those expectations those standards those boundaries those rules so it's not just money when you're trying to conjure it, it's money that thing that i've always struggled with the thing that caused my parents divorce the thing that we never had growing up the thing that i don't feel good spending you have all of these labels attached to um you always listen to my intuition and it gets me oh it does. Yeah. When you don't listen to your intuition, usually you're like, oh, I probably should have listened to that because things probably don't end up um, super, super fun. Meditation daily. Yeah. Meditate daily is a really great thing to do. I love, um, I love meditation. Meditation is a really good way to raise your vibrations. So your physical state or your state in general is made up of three things. You have your psychology, your emotions and your physiology and all three of these make up your energy so if you're trying to change your state if you are realizing that oh okay my energy is a little low i need to raise it so that i can um tune back into those thoughts and those emotions you can change three things you can change your psychology which is your thoughts and your um your self-talk the things that are happening in your head a good way to do that is journaling or meditation that helps excuse me that helps to kind of clear that very easily so you can change your thoughts um you can change your emotions and how you do that is sometimes not as easy psychology emotions and physiology yeah so your physiology is the easiest thing to change because your emotions um usually stem from thoughts so that can be a little bit hard to change sometimes you can't just say i'm gonna feel joy you can you can put your hands on your heart and you can focus on that feeling focus on what the um like the you're the happiest moment of your life so put your hands on your heart and say, like, think about the happiest moment in your life. Just daydream about it. Get into that energy a little bit. Like, get into, like, that moment and, like, you, how you felt and, like, the tingling in your body and how excited you were. So you can put your hands on your heart and think about that. And that's a really easy and quick way to raise your vibrations again. <clears throat> and then the third way is changing your physiology. Your physiology means, like, your physical body because all of your cells um, – well, they appear to be physical, we're all just energy. So it's just changing energy in different methods to change the energy of our overall state of being. Hmm. 
So change your physiology, move. <laughs> move your body, change your physical state. So this is a fun example, um, how to change your emotions through your physiology. So if you are feeling, you've probably heard of like the superwoman pose or whatever, how you put like your hands in your hips and you like puff your chest out. Um, so they, they've actually done scientific studies on how it's very hard to feel, feel really good when you have physiology that's in alignment with feeling bad. So if you think about if you're sad, if you think about sad things, you can physically feel your shoulders kind of coming in and your arms might cross. And basically you try and you close in your chest and it's this very protective, I don't feel safe, I don't feel loved, I don't feel comfortable, I'm not happy. It's this small protective energy. You're trying to cover up your vital organs, your heart, your lungs, your chest, where all of your tight emotions are. When you're sad or you're fearful or you're feeling shame or if you look at like um, there's that chart that has like gratitude and enlightenment and then like the emotions and their frequencies. So if it's a low frequency or a low vibration feeling and emotion, you're going to be contracting. You're going to feel tight. You're going to feel small. You're going to try and be taking up as little space as possible physically. And so if you notice yourself doing that, you're feeling super scared. You're tapping your foot. You can feel your, your physical body is very anxious. You can move your arms back shake out your hands, pull your chest back. Because if you think about it, if you're in this super contracted state, try and smile. Like it feels weird. It doesn't go with like a happy emotion does not go with this physiology. And so if you want to change that, change your physiology, move your body, put your hands on your hips, think about something happy, change your thoughts, talk yourself out of it. That's um, just like thought work and limiting belief work saying that, oh, okay, uh, that's an interesting thought. I can't believe that I'm having this thought. Um, get off your ass when you're feeling sad. Yeah. Put on your favorite song and dance. Dance is a fantastic way to get into a different energy. Absolutely. Dance is a fantastic way because it's, um, it's movement. It's really, really changing your movement. There's usually emotions that go along with it. And then there's sound. Sound is a very healing vibration. It's a very healing energy, especially, um, this is something I learned recently, vowels. So singing like, ah, like open sounds like that help to release energy that may be like tied up in certain energy centers in your chakras. Um, but singing, like one of my favorite songs is Hallelujah, the, the Pentatonix remix. I love that song. I love singing to it because it really helps to release energies in a very, very interesting way. Because, um, yeah, hot showers and meditation, cleaning, cleaning your body is a great one. I wasn't feeling great this morning, so I took a shower. I feel better after that, actually. So that's great too. Yeah. Um, I had another one. Ooh, EFT tapping. If you haven't done EFT tapping, so there's meridian points on your body, many on your face. You can tap on these different points. Hi, I love you too. Um, you can tap on these different points in your body. Have you seen Sacred G, the website? I haven't seen Sacred G. Ooh, I will make a note of that and I will go into that. It's a great activation. Oh, okay. I will absolutely go look at that. Thank you for the recommendation. I love recommendations. <laughs> so yeah, um, raising your vibrations through EFT tapping. That's a really good way to kind of clear. It's called emotional freedom techniques. That's a good way to clear your emotions. Again, changing your state. And that's how you're going to change your vibrations. And that's how you're going to be able to manifest and not conjure things. But yeah, that's what we talked about. Um, I'm just trying to think if I have anything else I wanted to say on the topic. So I did mention that conjuring is that really... Um, it's that dark energy. It's this trying to pull something that's a higher vibration down to your vibration in hopes that once it's here, it's going to bring you back up to the vibration that you have assigned it. So you can play with magic and play with energy in really fun ways. You can, um, so this is how I like think of and see and understand energy. So there's the energy output and then there's the thing that you were expecting to get back from it. And so many of us, oh, I'm so happy that you love my perspective. I love it too. <laughs> it's something I've spent a lot of time working on and really um, listening to, like figuring out and understanding for myself. So thank you. I'm glad that it's refreshing for you. Um, 
So when you're putting out energy, so we have this expectation of I'm going to put out certain energy and I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to get back. We like to have things be equal. We like to have things um, match. And so you can do a couple of different things. You, If you're trying to manifest something and you think that there's actions you need to take, you need to put out a certain energy in order to be worthy enough to have that. There's different ways that we can do that. What we're doing is we're assigning energy that we're we're assigning value to energy. So if you do ten different actions, you're like, okay, I have put out twenty five Facebook posts. I've t sent out a bunch of emails. I spent an hour journaling. I've been meditating like crazy. I wrote down my desires list. I've done my limiting belief work. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. So you can do a bunch of different exercises that are active manifestation exercises and think that because I have done so much, I have put so much energy out there. It, I really, really hope that that equals the energy that I want. Or you can assign more belief and more power to the energy that you were giving out. So instead of saying, I have to do my limiting belief work and visualize and do this and do this and meditate and journal and like do all of these things to be worthy enough, like my actions, have, I have to do so many different actions in order to be good enough to this, assign more value. Hi, how are you? Assign more value to um, the actions that you are taking and assign more or less value to what you think you need to be putting out. So really just change the value. Um, um, you may have been conjuring. Yeah, a lot of us do. And it's because we're, if we're trying to conjure something, it's in a state of, it's in a state of this is going to be, this is gonna help me feel good enough. And it's, it's just not talked about. So a lot of people are masking conjuring techniques as manifestation and that's a big thing. Like a lot of the programs I've been through several manifestation programs myself and a lot of it has this like just believe just believe just believe but if but yes you can manifest anything but if it's not something that feels good to you if it's not a soul desire then there's no point in trying to call it in um you're from Morocco that's really cool I'm in the United States so. yeah assign more value to what you're already doing so yeah it's, <laughs> it's just like so if you're gonna be putting out if you have to believe in yourself a certain amount and you only believe in yourself this much, so you need to make 10 different actions at, I believe in myself this much to make this much amount of, um, of like value. This is how much energy I believe that I have put out. This is how much energy I'm hoping to like, maybe I'll get this much back. If you're assigning it like that, then you're going to always have to do all of these different things. So if you realize like, okay, <laughs> this is where stepping into your worth comes in. This is where believing in yourself and tapping into that st that sense of self-worth, raising your self-worth to say, actually, I am so powerful that all, all I have to do for this to come into my life, because I am so divinely supported and loved and cared for, and I get what I want, and I'm really fucking powerful, I am going to write it on a list and it's going to show up for me because those are my standards. It gets to be easy. It gets to be fun. I don't care how it gets to show up, but it gets to show up. That's assigning much more value to your actions. That's making it much more energetically efficient. That is making your, um, that's raising your self-worth. That's raising your standards. And that is so much easier. If you are in an energy of, I just have to put this on a list and it comes to me, that's a state of self-worth. That is a state of manifestation that is calling something in and because if you believe in yourself that much you know that if it does come in or if it doesn't come in it doesn't matter you still feel good in your self-worth you're probably putting things on the list that are soul desires and if you're putting things on there that you know what maybe aren't like absolutely necessary but you just want for fun that's fine if you're putting it on the list and you're like if i can believe in myself enough to manifest this one thing that all i'm doing is putting on a list again, that's a constricting energy, then I'll be good enough. It'll prove that I'm good enough. It'll prove that I'm powerful enough. It's never going to prove that you're powerful enough. You have to believe in yourself that you are powerful enough before you can manifest the thing that you want. So assigning more value to, I am <laughs> believing in your self-worth, raising your self-worth to like, no matter what I do, it's at this level of energy. This is the amount of energy that I am putting out whenever I do anything. And this is all I have to do. There are no more requirements. There are, there's nothing else that I need to do in order to be good enough for this to come into my life. That's taking control of the situation. I went to a festival this weekend and manifesting energies. Yay! It is intense at a festival. That's funny that that's coming up because I'm thinking about going to my first festival. <laughs> so maybe I'll, uh, yeah, fear is the, fear is a block for sure. Um, so fear is 
it's a state of lack. So if we're trying to build our self worth and you're in the state of lack and somebody you're like, what if I'm not good enough? What if I'm not? Okay. So this is how I'm going to talk about the ego for a second and you're not allowed to laugh at me or hopefully you do. So this is how we have an ego. <laughs> we're going to get into our head. So, okay. How do I want to, okay. I have to like <laughs> get into it. Okay. So there's three portions of the th things in your head. Pretty much you have your conscious mind or you have yourself, which is like that silent observer. You have your identity, which is this thing that you create. And then you have your ego. So the ego cannot attack you directly because you're a soul and the ego is just part of the human brain. It's in the reticular activating system. It was designed to keep you safe and alive when there were actual physical threats available to us before consciousness was real, before consciousness existed. So it's here and all it's trying to do is keep you safe. So it cannot attack you directly, but it can attack your identity. So you don't actually create, um, you don't change yourself. Your soul is actually always going to be the same. It's just in this experience and in this physical body, what you are changing on the inside is your identity. It's kind of this iceberg between um, conscious and unconscious, this version of this is who I think that I am. This is what I think that I am capable of. This is what I think that I can do. This is how things work for me. It's your identity of how the world works for you, how your world works. And because that's how it works for you and because it's your world, this is your identity. It's who you think you are in every aspect. And so we've create, we've been creating this and building this self-identity through the stories that we tell ourselves, through the stories that we hear from our parents, from all of the things that happen from zero to 14 when you're unconscious and you don't have a choice, so you're just associative learning. So you have a lot of things tied up in your identity. And when you're trying to change something and it doesn't match the current identity that you already have, your ego comes in and it flips the fuck out. And so when I'm feeling fear, and I this is how I get over it quickly in a way that like feels good. So I imagine your ego is your quality control. It's it wants you to be safe. It wants you to be efficient. It wants you to be, it really wants to be safe. And so for you to be safe, it has this identity and it's like, this is what we've done before. This is what I know is true. This is what I know we're capable of. This is what I know works. And if we try and um, when does the ego flip out? The ego flips out when like, when you're trying to change something. Yeah. So you're trying to say, okay, actually i don't have to do all of these things you're trying to change like your self-worth or you're trying to like go after a big manifestation goal you're trying to say actually i'm like much more powerful than i think i am you're trying to like up level a little bit you're trying to grow and expand and your ego comes in and i need to visualize it like this and it works really well for me so it comes in with its little clipboard and its pen and it's saying okay 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 <laughs> you want us to do that okay you know what we can't do that because here on my list, um, this is everything we've done before, and that doesn't match this. There's these things way down in the subconscious mind that if you want to change that to be our identity, we're going to have to rip up this, 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 and it freaks out. It's like, whoa, 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 we can't do this. We can't do this. We can't do this because that would maybe mess up our identity. Or it's going to attack your identity saying, that's not true. That doesn't line up with this. That doesn't line up with this. It's showing you all of the things that you have done previously that make this not true for you. That it's saying this is how things have always worked for us. This is what you believe to be true. And it's gonna challenge you with your beliefs. And so you need to play CEO. You need to take um, control of the situation. You're not here to listen to the ego. You say, yeah, okay, I get that that's where you're coming from. Yeah, okay, I get it, cool. You don't believe in this yet. It's going to be a lot of work. Do what you have to do because this is where we're going. This is the new product we're creating. This is the new identity, and you just have to get on board with it. So you're crying, <laughs> hopefully in a good way. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that analogy, and it, it makes it so easy if you're just like, they've got their clipboard. And if you've ever seen um, Inside Out, the movie, I think of it as panic. The purple character who plays um, Disgust, I think, 
or panic, panic. Yeah. I just see him like freaking out with his little clipboard, like, well, 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 well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I think of the ego. The ego is really just here to keep you safe. It's quality control. Makes sense. But if we're trying to change the quality of the product, we're going to have to change the standards that we're holding it to. If we're trying to change the quality of our life, we're going to have to change um, our, under, our, our undercurrents, our underlying basic settings, our natural default state. And that has a lot to do with you're going to have to say, okay, it's like you you have a team of people of energy or you know your your body is an energy system and so you're saying we're going to do this and all of your cells and all of your beliefs and thoughts and everything that you've hold, held to be true has to say wait <laughs> we've been doing this for so long and you want us to just change that and you're like yeah we're just going to change that so there is it's a lot of cellular work you're rewriting your neural pathways when you're making these changes you're doing very intense work so it's a big deal to be changing your beliefs changing your thoughts in that manner so yeah it's going to be a little bit scary but you know what yeah when tell me yeah when things since i decided i have more space i pity I, yeah, since you've decided that you have no more space for pity and victimism. <laughs> That's funny. We're talking about victimhood on, um, let me see, Thursday. Thursday. The live video is going to be on victimhood. So that's a good thing that you brought that up. You'll have to catch that. <laughs> um, okay. I think that I've said most of what I wanted to say. I'm going to just recap really quickly about manifestation versus conjuring since that was the main topic manifestation is a fun in alignment state of calling things into your experience when it's going to amplify how you already feel it's easy it's fun you're probably you're, you should be doing it in the method that aligns with your human design chart with um your manifestation profile you should be doing it in a way that works with your energy and not against it if you are working against your energy if you are working against your human design chart, you are automatically in a state of conjuring. You're not in a state of manifestation. That's just my personal opinion, but fully, fully believe that if you are not in alignment with your human design chart, you're not living by your design, not living by your strategy, listening to your authority, whatever you do will not be, um, it'll be much harder to be in alignment with yourself. And that's going to be a much more conjuring energy than manifestation energy. So Manifestation is that calling in things. It's a state of I am worthy and I just get to snap my fingers. I get to write it on my list. I get to do the actions that are um, in alignment with what I believe to be true. I get to change the value of my actions. I get to assign more value to I'm just going to write this in a list but because I'm a powerful being and I have worked on my self-worth and I believe in myself so much that all I have to do is write it on this list and it's going to come to me because that's what I need to feel supported. That's what I need to feel joyful and it expand on the feeling that I already have. You're changing yourself. You're not changing your reflection. Conjuring is that energy of I'm here, the low vibration here, and I'm trying to pull this thing from a higher vibration down to my vibration in hopes that it's going to bring me up there. But if I've made this thing come down to my vibration, it is now in my vibration. And I, I didn't change my state. And so this has no ability to change my state and raise my vibration. So that's the energy of conjuring versus manifestation, where it's like, I get to feel high vibe. This gets to feel high vibe. This together, we rise together. Instead of pulling something down, trying to force it to prove your worth, to prove that you're good enough, to... Um, increase your value somehow, increase your self-belief that like, oh, I got to do this one thing. Now I'm going to automatically just magically believe in myself. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're going to have to, the things to, the things that you conjure do not have the power to change how you feel. You do. So yeah, we're just at about 40 minutes here. Um, so if you wanted to watch the replay, the replay is going to be on Instagram for a good while, I think 24 hours, and then it's going to be on my Facebook page in my Facebook group forever. So if you want to watch this, take notes on it, rewatch it, do whatever you want. Um, if you're just hopping on now, feel free to join the Facebook group or watch it when it's available. Thank you so much for tuning in. I had so much fun talking to you guys and I will be back on tomorrow. I have a guest tomorrow. We're talking about human design. And then on Thursday, we are talking about, or I'm talking about victimhood. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. so many videos to end. <laughs>